I'm Trace. And I'm Sam. And we're a pair of shorts. And this is From Our Perspective. Welcome to the 51st episode of From Our Perspective. Um, we're one week away, baby. One. one week away. How are you doing, buddy? I'm good. It's... See, when before I went to college... It was a little redundant to ask that question because we, like, only talk to each other. Yeah. And now that I'm at college, it it's, like, nice to ask that We've question. We've been apart. Because, I'm good. Because, yeah. Because we're... <laughs> we're, uh... Remember that episode of SpongeBob where Mr. Krabs gives SpongeBob over to the, the chum bucket? <laughs> and there's that whole musical number with their yeah, ghosts. This kitchen's not the same without you. Without you, yeah. That's what me and Sam are like. Uh, yeah. Me and an hour and a half. It's just a greasy. Uh, I don't know the. Stuff. I don't know the musical number. Uh, so you can sing it if you want. I could sing it by myself and do like two voices. Yeah, go Maybe for that'd it. That'd be fun. Go for it. No, I don't think I want to do that. We'll save that for next week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, <sighs> Yesterday, I started with uh, some of my friends up at college. I uh, started a Star Wars movie marathon. You say started. Started. We didn't finish. I mean, I well, we're going to continue a... watching all the movies. Okay. I was going to so, say, that's lame that you petered out. Well, we kind of did because there were some people who hadn't seen the prequels that needed to, that they said they needed to, so... And then they had to leave for a while. <laughs> Hold on. who Whoever needs to see the prequels? <laughs> that's a good point, but they hadn't seen them yet. I guess so, that's true. Um, so, and they had to leave for a while, so we stopped watching the movies. Okay. I was disappointed. Because you know how much I love the prequels. Like, yeah. Like, you have problems with them, I have problems with them, but I, I still love them so very, very much. Yeah, the weird thing is they weren't part of your childhood. No, they you still weren't. I mean, a little. you know, Star Wars itself wasn't a part of my childhood. It's like a new thing for me. Yeah. Um. So you know, that's my whole thing. I I grew up with it. Yeah. I was, I was raised on a healthy diet of Star Wars and Pokemon. <laughs> you turn into you turn into Bane. You, I, <laughs> wait, what does he say? You what does he say? Were, <laughs> you, uh, I was born let, in wait, Star Wait, wait, let me, let me, let me regain my thoughts. Um, but yeah, so, um, I've shared uh, my opinion with you. Mm -hmm. And to those of you who have watched the Star Wars movies, this is, like, I think it's not very controversial because the prequels, they... A lot of people know that they're bad, but they still like them because they're like they're still enjoyable. They're yeah, just bad. Yeah, there's something about them that's still kind of engaging, even if they're like riddled with problems. Yeah, um, but most people agree that the second one is the worst one I don't out know of the if prequels. It's unanimous. Well, I feel like I feel like that's what everyone says. I feel like it's always a toss up between one and two. Um, I think it's episode one. And we're not going to talk about Star Wars very long. Yeah, I just needed thing. something to say. I get it. Um, <laughs> um, so I think two's worse. So yeah. So me and Sam have differing opinions, and you know what? That's old okay. old Trace would have said that the podcast was over, and would have made a funny joke about how we disagree, and that means we can't be friends anymore. But, but now but, we're too far in, and we're locked in. But now we're locked. We can in. never leave. Now we have a blood oath with the devil himself that we can never <laughs> leave. Years, years and years later, a thousand to be exact, we are still going to be recording this podcast. That would be a lot of episodes. I really don't think there's enough things to talk about. Yeah. I mean, we're, we have trouble. We're already <laughs> scraping the bottom. <laughs> I don't know if we're scraping the bottom. It's just that we... We have, we, like me and you, have trouble thinking about what we should talk about. Yeah. And we should also probably plan ahead better. Yeah, instead of but like... who cares? Who cares, though? Except for, instead of like literally how most of the time it's, you know, you'll... It'll be your week and you're like, 
uh, we'll join the Skype call. It, it actually goes both ways. Yeah. It does. Uh, we'll join the Skype call. What are you thinking about talking about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know yet. Let don't me, know yet. Let me look at the internet for a minute. It's uh, it's already two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, we're well. just now figuring out. It's it's a constant for us. Yeah, I perform best under pressure. Is that true? Which no, that's a lie. But I do procrastinate a lot. I do too. I'm really bad about it. I want to like not. But you know, it, it always sounds like a good idea. It always I'll, sounds I'll, good to prepare. I'll get to being better about my procrastinating later. <laughs> good point. Good point. I totally <laughs> believe that. Um, do you ever like have those moments where you don't procrastinate, where you do some like heavy preparation and you feel good and you're like, man, I should do this more often. Or like you get you something don't. done a little bit ahead of time and you're like, that is a weight off my shoulders. That and is I really didn't... nice. I'm glad That's I could so do nice. that. I get to relax and not worry about it for a week. And then like, like you do that and then you're like, I should do that more often. But here's then, the thing. If you, you did don't. it more often, it wouldn't be as special. So that's a good point. That's my you defense. gotta have you got <laughs> you gotta have those little presents throughout your. You gotta have your downs to have your ups. You know, otherwise it's just the same. <laughs> We're absolutely the worst people. Never take advice from us. And and the, well, it's not really an advice show. It's more it's of an educational. It's a trivia education show. You can learn Tri- random shit that nobody cares about. Well, here's the thing. Um, well, okay. So I have uh, a lot of people presume me to be. They presume that I'm smart. And I'm not saying I'm dumb. I'm just. I just don't think I'm s- very smart. And why people think that I'm smart is because I have a lot of surface level knowledge of a lot of different things. Like a jack of all trades, okay. master of none type of deal um so when when it comes time like when someone's like oh so you do know about that we should talk more about it i'm like and then I, your, your eyes go wide and you start panicking yeah and i i actually like, shit God, no. in my pants <laughs> um no, it's That'd be just a quick like, way to get out of that conversation. You got a good point there. Yeah, <laughs> let's talk more about that. I just pooped. <laughs> ew! Ew! Get away from me! Um, you just turn the camera and smile and thumbs up. I'm, my life is a reality TV show. <laughs> um, but like, you do you feel the same way? Where you have like you feel like you have a base knowledge of a lot of things? No, I don't oh, know okay. a lot. Okay. I don't know a lot about a lot of things. Okay. Um, I guess it's just me, because I feel like... Well, and I do have like a lot of knowledge about very specific things. Like Pokemon. Like, I could... I would destroy a lot of you. Not all of you, because it's a big world. <laughs> yeah. Well, it... So, okay. So, I see, like, you... I have, like, a more based-out knowledge of... You know. Yeah, like I know nothing about TV shows. I don't know about music. And I have like a based out not, and yeah, I guess let's talk about entertainment specifically. It, it's just like very basic all around the board, but you have like specific spikes. I know I know video games very well and movies pretty good. I think you and know, then I know like, nothing about like TV. Nintendo specifically very well. I mean I know other stuff too. Yeah, but if I haven't like, played it I do know about it usually. That's true. I've usually I guess. heard of the game or seen, seen something it, about it. Seen it in passing a little bit. That's kind of true. The same I guess. with movies. Well, there's some very obscure movies that I definitely don't know about, but I yeah, I need to watch more movies. I want to do that. Didn't Maybe we theorize about a uh, movie watching like calendar type thing. Yeah, I don't know if it was on the uh, the podcast, but there's like these. Products, I always see them on fa- or yeah, on Facebook, like advertised to me, and I'll probably see it more now that I'm mentioning it in the vicinity of my phone. Yeah, it's like it's listening. <laughs> it's like those movie, it's like posters, and they have scratch offs on it, and you scratch off the movie that you've seen, and it's like a it's like a bucket list poster thing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would imagine they have them for like books and TV shows too. Yeah. But I don't really read much, and I I've seen a lot of TV shows. That's typically what I enjoy. So I it's think so it, long. <laughs> that might be my New Year's resolution: watch more movies, which probably isn't the best thing for me, but I'm gonna <laughs> do that. Anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll do the same. I'll try to watch more. Yeah, you have like an extensive watch list that I continuously I tell you to add to. I have a notepad in my computer that's full of stuff. And I, I literally sent you a, a, a meme the other day that was like to basically saying exactly what you do. Where you add stuff to your watch list, but you know, you know specifically that you're never going to watch it. It's, it's worse with like... Um people i don't know as well and they're like oh have you seen this thing i'm like oh i'll, I'll put that on my list and it's like is I'm it probably because never now the, that now the f- now the, because i know that you don't watch the stuff i recommend to you it hurts a little more <laughs> oh stop it's I'm like, it's just i don't get i haven't gotten around to it but yeah. i will know oh yeah <laughs> you haven't gotten around to it sam okay i know you're not busy 24 7 i know well, you're I know. not busy <laughs> Look here. <laughs> We're getting to the main topic before Yeah, let's get into the main talking. before we get our okay. feelings hurt. Anyway. 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 Today we're talking about dreams. Dream, dream, and dream, more dream, specifically, dream, dream. Excuse me. I'm speaking. Sorry. <laughs> I was reminded more of Shark Boy. <laughs> Shark Boy Lock. <laughs> dream interpretation. You have everyone has dreams. Yeah. <laughs> um. A, a lot of people. Uh, this was like twelve year old me when people say that they don't have dreams. Well, actually, you do have dreams. You just don't remember them. Yeah, I was gonna make that. that I was point. that. I was that kid. Um. Yeah, but yeah, you do. Everyone dreams. Um. I guess. Well. There might be outliers, but most people dream. You might. You there just, might be some people with like a medical condition that prevents that, them from dreaming or something. They're like brain dead, or it's a big world after all. That's true. Uh, there's a lot of people, um, but everyone dreams, and let's. And sometimes you wake up and you're like, "What the fuck just happened?" Yeah. Have you ever had those dreams where you're like, where you think that it actually happened in real life? No, but I've had ones where it's, like, a bad dream, and it was, like, realistic bad. Not, like, a monster, but, like, a car accident. And you're, like, <laughs> you wake up, and you're, like, I I remember going, oh, my God, I'm so <laughs> glad that's a dream. <laughs> I'm so stressed. <laughs> Why did my brain do that to me? Just, like, for well, a second. For I've had dreams where, for, like, a second, I didn't know if I was asleep or if I was awake. <laughs> Like, when I woke up, I was like, did th- that just happened? And then it takes me, like, a good couple of minutes to realize it didn't just happen. Um, but, you know, talking about dreams, it's always fun because they're always so very, very wonky. Yeah. Um, but we're going to get into how you can interpret those dreams when you wake yeah. up and you're like, what the fuck just happened? And from the best website to explain how to do things... WikiHow. WikiHow. We love them. Um, I specifically made a request to Sam to include <laughs> WikiHow. I went to a different one, and he was like, please, I need the WikiHow one. I started weeping. <laughs> Part one, keeping yeah. a dream journal. Okay. So place your dream journal next to your bed. Uh, even if you don't remember your dreams, you have, uh, you have them every night. Yeah, see? They're getting smart with us, too. Yeah. Writing them down can help you remember your dreams. Along with your dream journal, keep an, uh, a pen or pencil. Uh, this will remind you to record your dreams and as soon as you wake up. Don't forget to bring your dream journal along with you when you travel. And if you don't have a pen or pencil, write in your dream journal with blood. With blood. Bite your finger. Bite your finger off. Get your canines. Really just pinch down. Oh, uh, okay. Or you bite could your bite finger all off. the way off. That, yeah. You know, that also gets blood. Maybe at least just like the first tip. Yeah, just so who needs you're it, like really? rationing. You're rationing who needs, out. Who needs their whole finger? Exactly. You know? Who needs the whole finger? Um, number two, 
The moment you wake up, keep your eyes closed and try to remember as much of the night's dream as possible. Now, here's the thing. is Sometimes, I, even though I know that I dream every night, when I wake up, like in that instant, I don't think that I dreamed. Or I guess I just don't like give myself time to think that I dreamed. Well, you have to keep your eyes shut. You need to keep your eyes shut. I'll keep my eyes grab, shut. Grab your pencil and your journal and just start writing like a crazy person. And you know how like when you can't see when you're writing and sometimes it just starts to slope down? Yeah, it's like droops. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. You'll be able to interpret it. <laughs> but yeah, do put it in your journal. ASAP. Don't even go to the bathroom, as that gives your mind time to forget. Yes. Pee your bed. You'll get more meaningful interpretations if you remember more details. And if you pee your bed. Yeah. It keeps you nice, warm, and cozy. Exactly. Ew. <laughs> uh, number three. <laughs> Record everything you can remember, obviously. Okay. Yeah. This includes Is- what you were doing, who was with you, how you felt... So just emotions you felt, people in the dream, animals, the setting of the dream, colors, a mode of transportation if there was one, a journey if there was one, a plot if there was one. See, I don't do, I don't think, like, I'm remember, because there are dreams that I do remember. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can remember, like, I have my first nightmare that I remember. Um, and, and, you know, just crazy other, it's like nightmares that I always remember. Um, other crazy dreams, but I don't remember any of them being in color. Maybe it could be because like, I'm, I'm like 14 years older now than I was when I had my first nightmare or what have you, but I just don't remember that dream being in color at all. (laughs) I mean, I guess it didn't have to be, right? All, all of my dreams are, are period pieces. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, number four, mm-hmm. avoid creating a plot in your dream if there isn't one. So don't be like, oh, this must have been what I was doing. Don't search for Just missing. write it verbatim. Don't search for missing clues or anything like that. Don't yeah, connect five, the dots. Don't try to interpret the dream while you're recording it. Just write. Okay. So don't title get ahead each of dream. yourself. Don't get, title them? Yeah. Give them a name. The one where I was naked at Walmart. That's a bad title. It is a bad title. But how am I supposed to come up with a title for every dream I have? Um, I don't know. Okay, for example, you could title the forest dream described above something like The Chase, Scary Woods, or Running Scared. Or Or Running Wild with Bear Grylls. Or like the, okay, that's a good one. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe Bear Grylls was chasing the person. It was a it was a grizzly bear that was named Bear Grizzly. Is that a joke? Maybe his name could have <laughs> just been Bear Grylls. But like, maybe Grizzly Bear. That's bear already grills. his name. Grizzly Bear Grylls. That's pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> Bear Grizzly. Shut Continue. up. <laughs> Part two. Analyze your dreams. Okay. Number one, question yourself <laughs> they just, about the dream. They just tell just you to analyze it. it. <laughs> analyze just do it. it. They don't just, give you any. You know, just start thinking about it. Question yourself about the dream. I don't know what this could mean. Asking questions is a great starting point because it helps you to start picking apart the dream. The questions you ask should vary depending upon what your dream is about, as you will question the meanings and relationship behind the individual elements in the dream. Here are some examples of questions you could ask. Was I alone? Who was there? Did I sense someone? Did I sense? sense? I'm I'm a a Jedi. Did I sense another Force user? Sense. (laughs) Yeah, are you Force sensitive in this dream? Maybe. How did I feel? What does the setting mean to me? Didn't we already write all this down? How did you feel with your hands... I hate you. <laughs> Keep going. Don't let the audience <laughs> dwell on that joke long <laughs> Identify enough. the underlying emotions. We already did this, didn't we? 
Yeah, it's basically Didn't we saying. Write down how we felt. Saying like, do it again, though. Ask yourself <laughs> it, questions like, it, like, how did this dream leave me feeling, or when have I recently felt that emotion in my waking life? Examine I, the setting of the dream. Well, are you, this, is there something wrong? This seems like too much work. <laughs> I would just rather forget the dream. Excuse me. Do you want to know what your dreams mean or not? I guess so. Nothing in this life is easy, Trace. I guess that's true. Examine the setting of the dream. Okay. Where the dream takes place is important, as well as the mood of the location. Yeah. For example, a forest can be bright and peaceful, or it can be dark and foreboding. Okay. Additionally, it's important to consider how you personally relate to that location. Okay. So, how would you Um, closely relate to a forest, Sam? Uh... I I ain't got no problems with forests. Okay, so because you don't have a problem with it, um, that means the bear is your. I'm I'm trying to analyze too quickly. I'm trying to analyze too quickly. Um, I need more information. How do I analyze this dream? Oh, keep, okay. Keep Four. Me. Reflect on the other characters or animals in the dream. Okay. There's a bear. Did you recently have a fight with the person? With a bear? Yes. The dream could be related to that fight. Alternatively, does the person represent something to you? For example, your favorite teacher could appear in your dream because your unconscious mind wants you to learn something. That seems like bogus, but whatever. (laughs) Well, you know. It is. It's bogus. (laughs) It is. (laughs) Pick number five. Pick out the images or symbols in your dreams. Just do okay. it. Okay. Number six. Look for reoccurring themes in your dream. So, like, multiple bears. Are you repeatedly murdering people? You could be a murderer. <laughs> you could be, you could be feeling guilt about all the murders you've committed. <laughs> for example, you may have <laughs> had the recurring thought in your dream that you were losing things and unable to keep track of items that you were carrying. You may connect this feeling to a real-life situation where you lost an important item that you need for work or school. Okay. Okay. So if you lose things in your dreams, maybe you've lost something in your real life. Uh, Number seven. Yes, I believe that's what it's saying. Okay. Uh, Use a dream dictionary only if you get stuck. And the, don't we don't we have one of those? We do have a dream dictionary. Oh pop-up. yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Recognize common dream tropes. Okay, I'm. Let's just fi- rapid fire through these. Yeah. Consider if something has ended in your life if you dream of a death. Hold on. Oh, we can't rapid fire through these. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Consider if something has ended in your life if you dream of a death. So, like, for example, okay, you may be graduating from school. Although this is an ending, it kicks off an exciting new phase of your life. What does that have to do with anything? I don't really know. Okay. Vehicles. I feel I like doing think. this by myself, like interpreting a dream by myself, is just too hard. Now, when it said common tropes, I would like tropes for dreams because I didn't know that there were common tropes. Yeah. Want to hear some of them? Uh, sure, I guess. I know I'm kind of stealing your thing, but. Yeah, you shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, falling. So like, they're uh-huh. fa- fa- I've I've had reoccurring falling dreams. Um, it's a red flag. Um. When you're you typically have that dream when you're having a problem with work relationships or elsewhere. Second common dream that everyone has is teeth falling out. Yeah, that's supposed to be common. I've never had one, but yeah, that was my thing. Is that I don't really know the teeth falling out dream, but you know. I guess <laughs> you know uh, the one where your teeth fall out. Yeah. Uh, And then, like, there's a lot more, but the other common one is showing up to work or school naked. That's one that other people... Like I I said, I have, like, a Walmart version. 
Yeah. And then half of the Walmart turned into a beach. That was weird. Like where the dairy section. Dream, dream, dreams are yeah. weird. What do you think? What do you think that meant? It meant. Well, what do beaches mean to you? Um, meant that it. Um, that I don't like beaches. Oh, you no. don't. You don't like sand. I don't. It's it's it coarse, coarse and rough, rough and, and it gets, gets everywhere. everywhere. It's unlike you. <laughs> Aww. That's a Star Wars quote. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just for those who don't know. So anyway, 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 um, we've got a little thing that we're gonna do. Um, yep. I'm on uh one of my favorite websites, Reddit. Uh huh. I read it on the internet. I hate you. Um, I hate you on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate me. <laughs> um, I went to uh, the subreddit Dream. Okay. Uh, and I guess from what I'm seeing, it's just people posting about weird dreams they had. Great. And we're going to interpret them. I have a dream dictionary open here. And we're going to... Yeah, Sam. We're going to pick out keywords, key plots, and stuff like, like that. Yeah. Kind of see what we can do with these uh, random strangers' dreams. So this first one, okay, um, it's a short one. Some of them look long, but this one's short. All right, let's do it. Uh, this it's titled "Using a Dragon as a USB Device." <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting in a car, and my dr- and and my driver grabbed a giant dragon and shoved him into the USB port of the car <laughs> to use him as a navigation system. I don't know since when dragons work as navigation systems, but at least it was funny. Interesting. So, do we want to do dragon? Yeah, I was I was heading my way there. Okay. So, dragon, a car. Yeah, we'll do... Let's do dragon. I feel like dragon is the weird yeah. part of this one. Jesus, there's so many words. Is there not like a little search bar? This one. This should have it in there. Dragon... Uh, dragon. To see a dragon in your dream represents your strong will and fiery personality. You tend to get carried okay, away. Does, okay. Does it explain <laughs> what, what a dragon means? When you get shoved in a USB port? Well, what does it explain what a dragon means if the dragon's being used as a navigation system? Hold on. Well, let me look. Mm, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Is it that, doesn't say no, anything No, that's about not that. on there? No, it does talk about your strong will and fiery personality. Maybe you feel like somebody's using your strong will and fiery personality. That is a... Sam, I'm not going to lie. This is not a joke. That was honestly one of the best fucking interpretations of a dream <laughs> I've, ever, I've ever heard. Maybe you oh feel like... Oh my god, you might have a talent. Maybe you feel like your, uh, your passion is being put into other people's... Uh, like, moving their lives forward with their car... With you know. their navigation system. Yeah. Let's find car. Was that? Hold yeah, on. Is, I mean, is USB in this? <laughs> see if USB is one that we can do. Because I feel like Dragon and USB are the main things. Yeah, those the, are the main concepts here. Um, I'm going to look for the next USB dream. drive. What? No way. <laughs> to see a USB drive in your dream refers to ideas and advices that you need to look at incorporating into a waking situation or some aspect of your life dreaming of using a usb drive means that you are able to easily convey your feelings beliefs and ideas to others also consider what kind of files are on the usb drive so refers to ideas and advice so maybe if if the user like knew the driver of their car specifically maybe the dragon and the USB represents a, a willingness to show this side of their personality, this okay. fire fire side of their personality. Maybe to this to the driver to the mystery driver. I like trying to find meaning in dreams where there is none. <laughs> Make it up. <laughs> Make it up. Make stuff up. Okay. Maybe it means that somebody. Is it going to set your car on fire soon? With a dragon. Yeah, with a dragon. With a real dragon. 
See, I feel like the real, the like the most real like meaning a dragon could be in a dream is like like a flamethrower, like a cool flamethrower, <laughs> like a living flamethrower. Maybe you're gonna, maybe user, you're gonna find, or you're gonna invent the first USB powered flamethrower. That would be interesting. That helps you navigate. That's also an, a. Uh, it GPS. always points Cardinal North. <laughs> it's very useless. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, um, what's our next, next one? dream? Yeah, next dream. I keep having a dream about my leopard gecko multiplying. That's just the like the the header. Every few months, I have a dream about my pet lep lepid gecko called Gizmo multiplying. Oh. I've had her for a few years. And after the first year, I had my first dream about it. It has become more and more frequent. I remember a lot of my dreams, but I didn't write them down because I got no time for that. I think it might mean something, but I don't know. Each of the other geckos have a letter on their head because my gecko has a G on there. My family and the dreams seem really chill about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, seem it's really totally chill about fine it. that they're multiplying. All I want to know is whether... Uh, it means something or not. Well, okay. we're going to tell you right now, user you. Koshi. First off, 10, its name is Gizmo? The, uh, the gecko's name is Gizmo. Well, in the movie Gremlins. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It multiplies. Is that, is did you that, feed it after midnight? Well, no, did you get it wet? Oh, yeah, that's what multiplies them. And feeding yeah, them makes them evil. Makes them gremlins. Yeah. Um... That's what I was thinking. Like, I don't think you need to look up anything. Also, um, I don't really know what you would look up. Well, Gecko. Like, uh, maybe, uh, ge is Gecko on there? Of course it is. Are you doubting my dream dictionary? I didn't know that that was on there. To I'm see sorry. a Gecko in your dream represents an agreement or affirmation. The answer to a decision that you need to make is yes. Alternatively, the dream signifies renewal. Renewal? Okay. They're multiplying multiple renewals. <laughs> Well, you need you know to say the, yes a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know the Jim Carrey movie Yes Man? <laughs> you need to that do was, that. You need to do that now. Is Gizmo on here? Is Gizmo on That's there? That's not Look a up real word, though, is it? I mean, like, if you're referring to, like, a little, like, electronic, I like, that's, that's a little Gizmo. Um... Um, I don't, I don't know, though. It's, it's not... Okay, well, let's go to the next one. Well, how about the word that's close to it? Gizzard. Okay. Let's see if it no, helps. I don't... Well, gizzard is like gizmo and lizard put together, so... And a, and a gecko is like a slimy lizard. Yeah, well, a gecko is a lizard. I hate to break it to you. It's like a little slimy one, though. <laughs> they're, they're not even slimy, are they? They're like, they're like more round. Aren't geckos, like, amphibious? No. Oh. I mean, they not they're not amphibians, but they might be amphibious. To see they're, or eat gizzards in your dream refers to a ew. difficult or emotional situation that you're eat, trying to process or understand. Eat gizzards? Yeah, people do that. Ew. Anyway. It is a gross word. I don't think I'd want to eat something called a gizzard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Next so, dream. Yeah, next one. I think we're knocking uh, knocking so, out of the park. Yeah, uh, either go watch Gremlins or start saying yes more. Yeah. Um, this one is called My Teeth Turned Into Monster Fangs. Okay. Um, I had the strangest dream where my teeth turned into long, slightly curled monster fangs. Horrible. These fangs were not your average vampire fangs, though. They were so long I could not close my mouth. In the dream, it started with two... We tried to pull one out, and then suddenly more appeared. What was possibly strangest about this was that they had the texture and shape of very long, fake, manicured nails. Oh, God. I'd say approximately 15 to 20 centimeters long. Any idea if something like this has a particular meaning? <laughs> has anyone else had a similar dream? Is there an explanation as to why my dream was so strange? Let me tell well, you. Well, user Romanski Goddess, we're here, answer your we're here to help. Let me tell you, teeth is apparently a big deal in dreams. 
Yeah, it's very common for some reason. I don't remember a single okay. teeth dream. So to dream that your teeth no brushing. What your about teeth, if your no. what if your teeth turn into fake manicured nails but very long approximately 15 to 20 centimeters oh god dreaming that there are teeth growing all over inside your mouth from the roof of your mouth under your tongue could you imagine that that's horrible like actually happening no i think this one like that's like close to what happened though in this dream uh didn't i would say she didn't this person say they tried to pull him out Yes. To dream that you're pulling teeth out of your mouth and it hurts refers to something that you do not want to do. If you dream of pulling teeth out of your mouth and it does not hurt, it means that a situation was not as difficult or tedious as you had initially assumed. Okay. So, if you're trying to pull teeth and they're monster teeth, maybe it's saying that you're too nice. Maybe kind of embrace the nasty in your life. Or maybe you expect people to be worse than they are. With what? How does what? I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to work with it. Um, I'm trying to work with it. I appreciate your dedication. There's nothing in this dictionary about monster teeth, Trace. Well, what I'm saying is, is like the teeth are monsters, okay? I would imagine pulling teeth in a dream, or pulling teeth at all, it's going to hurt. So if you're having a rough time pulling out the monstrous side of you, maybe your dream, your subconscious is just saying, like I said, you're just too nice. You're just too nice of a person. Embrace the nasty. Be a little bit more. Don't be a a doormat anymore. Okay. Stand up for yourself. Okay. And that's the closest bullshit answer I can get. (laughs) You know? Uh, I guess so. The next one is called heroin. Oh, no. Now, this is... When I first started looking through this subreddit just to kind of vet some of them, this is the one I kind of laughed at. Okay. (laughs) It's very short. I just... I just liked the way some of it was worded. (laughs) I had a dream that I did heroin. I injected it into my veins, and I kind of liked it. (laughs) But I also felt very guilty and that no one should know about it and that I should probably never do it again. What does this mean? I've never done heroin IRL in real life. Is heroin on your list? I'm I'm working on it. Because uh, I mean I feel like I feel like I'm I can do something with this already. And then we'll see if if like the dream dictionaries definition of heroin changes my interpretation here let me do an interpretation then we'll see what heroin means in a dream and we'll see if that changes my interpretation okay um obviously you said you felt guilty maybe your subconscious is substituting something from your real life like maybe you just as an example eat too much snack food and you know that it's bad for you And you keep, but you keep doing it anyway. So your subconscious is substituting, like, the worst thing ever, heroin, for, you know, one or two extra donuts that you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't have. Maybe that's what it is. And that's why you're guilty, and that's why you don't think, like, you're hiding that part of your life. Okay, is that, like, your guess at what heroin means for this dream? Or is that, like, just your interpretation of this dream? That's the interpretation of the dream. Okay. Um, What heroin means. Uh, To use heroin in your dream refers to your desire to escape from the pain of reality instead of confronting it. You are looking for a fix because you are feeling broken. That definitely changes my interpretation of this dream then. I'm going to look up guilt since they said they felt guilty. Okay, before you look up that, I'm going to do my change interpretation. Okay, we're going to slowly tweak his interpretation. Yeah, I'm going to slowly tweak my interpretation. Okay, so you're looking for an escape in life. You want something new. And what you want new is maybe you, like, want new friends. Or you want, like, a new routine. And you're scared that if you change your routine or change your friends or get out there more, you're going to hurt someone's feelings. Or maybe you're going to hurt yourself in, like, a, not a physical way. Um, 
and that's why you're feeling guilt that you're trying heroin in your dream. And that's my new interpretation. Or it could be that, like, it's against the law. Or it could be that you feel guilty about breaking the law because heroin is not kosher in the eyes of the law. (laughs) Sure. Uh, guilt, the entry more refers to feeling guilty in the dream rather than outside of it. Well, it says... Oh, it's in the dream? Yeah. Okay. To dream that you feel guilty about something relates to how you are handling your successes and failures or competence and incompetence. You may feel undeserving of your achievements or, on the other hand, you feel that you have let others down. Alternatively, the dream is symbolic of repressed and negative feelings that you may have about yourself. Man, if this is, like, interpreting the dream, I'm sorry to have had this dream. You must be going through some shit. (laughs) Now my new interpretation is you really want to try heroin. You really want to do heroin? Because apparently your life is pretty rough. Your life sucks. Your life is in shambles. I'm sorry, user. Some girl, BLX. BXL. Yeah. Um, What's our next one on the docket? Um, okay. This one is titled, Need Some Explanation, so... Okay, well, we are here to provide. Yeah, uh, posted by Audrey Kimsey. Okay. Have you guys dreamt if something... Okay, wait. Have you guys dreamt if something that magically appears to be the event that you're going to experience months later? What? What? Okay, (laughs) did you glean anything from that? I... Can you read it one more time? <laughs> I'm going to read it one more time. Okay. I'm going to slow down because I had some trouble. <laughs> read it slow. Have you guys dreamt if something that magically appears to be the event that you're going to experience months later? Have you ever dreamed about something that's going to happen months later? I guess so. It, it goes on to explain. E.g., I had a dream months before I went to a homestay. And in that dream, the location, scenery, and the window, and scenery at the window are exactly the same as the one I dreamt about months before. It's kind of creepy to think, but I had a friend who also encountered similar experience, yet my family think of it as a coincidence. But I guess it's not, as I had experienced it multiple times since young. Can anyone give me an explanation regarding this situation? Thanks for a lot. Well, I don't know much about the dream. Yeah, so, okay, so basically what they're saying, what they Audrey asking, is saying. Can she see the future? Is that what she's asking? Well, she's saying, like, she had a dream that she went to someone's house, I guess. Yeah, or went to a house. Went to a house. And then she went to that she house in real life. She hadn't been there in real life. Yeah. And at the dream. She imagined the house to have specific features, specific furniture, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And when she went to the house in real life, it looked exactly like her dream. That would be really weird if that did happen. I guess you just felt deja vu. And you were like, oh yeah, I had a dream that I, I was dream going about a here. House. I had a dream that I was going here, and this feels like that dream. Yeah, deja vu is weird. Deja vu is weird. There are a lot of theories on what deja vu actually is. But I think there is, like, proof of what it actually is. I had it the other day when I was reading a textbook. I was just sitting in my room reading, and I was like, I've done this before. I've read this exact thing. No, like, it was like like the same layout of the screen and everything. Anyway. Okay. I see that. Uh, I don't really know how to interpret that dream or if there's anything we can glean from it. I don't think so, because all we got was like a window, and I don't think they were so much worried about what that dream meant, but rather like the uh, existential ramifications of being able to see the future. (laughs) Yeah. Through some sort of divination magic. (laughs) Maybe they are force sensitive for real. <laughs> yeah, they're actually a Jedi. Uh, okay, this one is titled "Had a disturbing dream where a person was brought back from the dead, and the father destroyed it body to protect the children, but the way he did it was almost as shocking." What? 
you know you get it you know <laughs> you know you I was, okay before? hold on i just have to make a quick aside and say that as i was scrolling through the d's to find like death i found darth vader <laughs> Darth Vader? I need to know what Darth Vader is. To see in Darth Vader means. in your dream implies that you are struggling between good and evil. Alternatively, the Darth Vader represents your shadow aspect. There's a negative influence or force pulling you towards the dark side. That's rad. And then you that. and then That's you cut cool. his head off, and then his face mask explodes, <laughs> and then it's your face in there. It's you. It's you. It's actually you. And then you wake up and you're on a Dagobah. <laughs> Exactly. And Yoda's training you. Yeah. And then you're Luke Skywalker. Anyway. Uh, I won't write exactly how it happens because that was disturbing enough as it is. This is going to turn into like a creepypasta, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Basically, they for real came through. And then Mario was there and he had blood for eyes. <laughs> Hyper realistic. Basically, I watched a young boy bring his mother back to life. But at the end of the dream, I witnessed the father smash the mannequin, which had the soul connected to it. It was actually turned to flesh as well. So it was a full-on human person. Not the whole half and half. It was actually the human person brought back from the dead, and the father smashed it to pieces. Oh my god. Ended up hearing some white noise out of it as well, where the screams woke me up. But yeah, I will post a short reaction of the dream in the comments. But I'm not writing exactly how the ending was because this was purely disturbing. Okay. First thing I went straight for was... And then they... Wait. And then they went on to post, like, a book of their reaction to the dream. Okay. I'm not going to read it. Yeah. But it's like... It's like... There's, like, dialogue and everything. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway. the first thing that stood out to me... Resurrection. Okay. Bringing somebody back from the dead. I was like, that's, yeah. that's got to mean something. Yeah. To dream that Does you it. or someone is resurrected from the dead suggests that you will eventually overcome your current obstacles to achieve your goals. It signals an awakening of your spirituality and renewed energy. Alternatively, the dream indicates that the same old problems are coming back to haunt you because they were not properly addressed or dealt with in the first place. Now, what does it mean... If somebody's getting brought back to life and then is killed in that dream. <laughs> and then their and then their husband smashes them to pieces. Yeah. Okay, so that would mean you're not going to overcome or achieve your goals. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna come so close. And then your husband smashes you and to pieces. And your husband will kill you. Um was there yeah. a mannequin? I bet that's got yeah. some implications. So apparently the mannequin so they, the mannequin was like the conduit for the soul. So it could be, so the soul could be resurrected back on this mortal plane. Yeah. But as soon as the mannequin was used, it turned into real flesh. Which is horrifying. This is a terrifying dream. Yeah, it wasn't like a, it says it wasn't, so it was a full on person, not the half and half. It was actually a human person. Okay, this is really weird. A mannequin. To see a mannequin in your dream represents an extension of your own self that you are projecting. You may feel that you are not playing an active enough role in some situations. Consider how the mannequin is dressed uh, for clues as to what you may wish to act out, but have not done so. You want to resurrect someone from the dead. (laughs) No, no, because the mannequin was used to resurrect. Okay. So this person is being resurrected from the dead and then being smashed to pieces. Okay. This is a very hard dream to interpret. Yeah. Okay, so the, what was it? A father and a son? So the son brought his mother back to life. Okay, we've got to get like deep in the paint here. The this mother... Is like the, this is like the first like really weird one. The other yeah, ones were kind of so the... odd, but they were like, whatever. This one is there's a mannequin and a... And there's flesh a dynamic and there's... duo it's and mannequins horrible. and more mannequins and no there's only one mannequin um so the son so i guess the mother died who knows how yeah the son a young boy using a mannequin brought his mother back to life 
But at the end of the dream, the father smashed the mannequin, which had the soul connected to it. Yeah, okay. But the mannequin was still, it had turned into flesh and as well. I really and, then, don't know. and then the and then the person goes on to describe. So it was a full on human person, not the whole half and half. It yeah, was actually yeah, yeah, yeah. the human yeah. person. Yeah. Okay. So the son interpretation, though, it's referring to your son most of the time. So maybe so like my kid. Yeah. So I'm saying that this is kind of a weird situation where I can't interpret. Because there's means. so many moving parts. Yeah. This is a crazy dream. I think you need to seek actual psychiatric help. That's my hey, Damo. Hey, Damo Martin, twenty three. Go see a fucking therapist. Yeah. You stop asking man. us questions. Get off my back. I don't know Get everything. Get off my back. <laughs> you didn't have to ask me. <laughs> okay. Um. Last That's our one. Next one. Yeah. Last one. This is a very th- short one. Okay. Um. So it'll be easy to interpret. I dreamt of a long, thick snake. That's the title. I have to. Break some Go ahead and to find you. snake. <laughs> I saw a long, thick, if, and black, if, silvery if I, snake. If I know my Freud, <laughs> I think I know what if, that means. If I know good old Sigmund, I saw a long, <laughs> thick. Oh yeah, I saw a long, <laughs> thick, and black, silvery snake Whoa. in my dream. And I feel like it's supposed to mean something. This comes from user Mini Margs. Okay. Penis envy. Probably. Oh God, snake. There's. So much. Okay. Does it get to long, thick, and black silvery? <laughs> Is that a descriptor snake, for a snake? snake? With, a with a snake with a head on each end. Oh, God. No, that's not right. Snake, no, snake in the dream. What about like a big snake? Big snake. Snake is eating another snake. No. 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 Eating. No. If you dream that you. <laughs> Hold on. I just want to read this one real quick. If you dream that you find a snake in every hotel room, then it means that you're moving toward a questionable or risky direction in your life. What a weird dream. I keep going to hotels and there's always a snake in my room. There's a snake in my room. And then there's Indiana Jones there and he's it had to be snakes, always he says. Snakes. Okay, so we'll just go for the generic snake. To see a snake okay. or be bitten by one in your dream signifies hidden fears and worries that are threatening you. Your dream may be altering, alerting you to something in your waking life that you are um, not aware of or that has not yet surfaced. If you dream that a snake is submerged in water, no. If the snake tangles itself, no. No. I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything for like a really big Alternative snake. Alternatively, the snake may be seen as phallic and thus symbolize temptation, dangerous, and forbidden sexuality. More specifically, okay. to see a snake on your bed suggests that you're feeling sexually overpowered or sexually threatened. Was it on their Was it on their bed? I don't know. It was long and thick, though. You may be inexperienced, nervous, or just unable to keep up. If you are afraid of the snake, were they afraid of it? Uh, all it, this one was so short. It was just I saw a long, thick, and black, silvery snake in my dream. I want to find color. Oh, okay. If you dream of a multicolored snake or brightly colored snake. So black and silvery, that's two. It's two. A red snake, no. Is there green? Is there no black, really? Well, what about multicolored? Okay, multicolored. Then it is a clear warning about something bad happening. Great. So it's just a lot of warning stuff. And it's a big, thick snake. So... Yuck. So thick. It's a big, thick snake. Mm. Uh, there's a big thing that you're not worrying, that you're not like ready for. That's in your life, okay, and you, you don't know. What? know. Let's it's, check black. It's scary. Yeah, just look at black real quick, and then we'll get into. And then we'll it. get into. The we'll get into the next thing. Black. Uh. My God! Black cat, black widow, black bird, black snake. No black snake though. Black okay. smith. <laughs> black smith. That's close enough. There's nothing about black apparently. There's nothing about black, sadly. So it's just like it's a thick, it's a big, big thick, thick, multicolored thick snake. Black snake. Uh, snakes. So snakes mean there's something that 
is in your life that you haven't noticed yet. And if it's multicolored, then it's a warning. Or it's and since or the, it represents your fears and uh, hidden sexualities. So you're getting warned about either something in your life that you haven't noticed or your hidden sexuality, and it's big. It's something it's big, big that you haven't noticed yet. Yeah. And it's not good, probably. Because and it's probably not good. Yeah, because, you know... Because it's a big snake. Yeah. Mm. Or big, how about this? Snake. Maybe she's seeing the future and she's going to get attacked by a giant black snake. By a giant black and silvery snake. Yeah. You're forgetting the silvery. I do keep forgetting that. You're right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway, that's... That's dreams. That's dreams. I hope you learned something in there. Yeah. Go If you, if you had a weird dream, don't tell us because I don't care. Wow. But go to the dream dictionary and figure it out yourself. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Today in history. Yeah. What happened? Today is January 20th. Uh-huh. Uh, today in history, 1945. Okay. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt sworn in for an unprecedented and never to be repeated fourth term as U.S. president. Okay. It's a little known fact about President Roosevelt during World War II. He served, uh, four actual terms. Yeah. Um, but that's so, not like, that's yeah. not one of our our fake ones. That's real. Yeah, that's actually real. You made it that, sound like it's that. one of our ones. The way you started well, into it. Yeah. A little well, known no. fact. Little known fact. No, it's a lot of people think that the president can't legally be elected for more than two terms. He totally can. I think they changed that. I thought he could. I thought he could. Now I thought you could do it for as many as you wanted. It's just like I thought they changed that like, after him. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, I don't really know because I remember hearing about it. Like George Washington, O G Wash, was like, Two's good. I'm only doing two. I'm I'm stopping at two. And then everybody else was like, and I'm everyone else was soon. like, Good idea. Good idea, G. I'm gonna do that too. Except FDR, who was like. I'm the coolest. Who's like, let's fucking kill Hitler. <laughs> That's why he did it. People don't... It, it, it was during World War II. I don't know vendetta. why. I don't know why he thought that he needed to be president for four terms during World War II. I don't know why he couldn't just, like, pass that off or anything. But, you know, he did. He was... He, I mean, he was a good president. He's a cool, he was a cool guy. Um... A lot of people think that he did die into the into his fourth term, uh, but he actually didn't. Um, after a couple of months, I think he um, was able to cure his polio by actually getting like mech mech legs. He was a cyborg now. Made of titanium. Yeah, he's made of titanium. Same thing the space shells made out. Um, That's a force. Is that a reference? reference? Okay. When he, like, at the end of the movie, when he has the metal legs. Oh, yeah. He's like, you got magic legs. You got magic legs, Lieutenant <laughs> Diane. <laughs> um, but no, it's like they're like robotic. They're not just like... Yeah. He's like a he's like a cybernetic android now. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, it was like a spider. It was like a spider Yeah, it's spider like he body. had like eight of them. Yeah. And now he roams the countryside, killing... Um, yeah. Killing android hitler we didn't get to, we didn't get to him on our cryptid episode yeah he he but he, but the difference between him and a cryptid is he's real yeah and he's out Cyber- there and he's nasty cybernetics uh spider franklin d roosevelt is real <laughs> he's out there and he he will come for you yes he will if you've been naughty this year he's making a list he's checking it twice he's right behind santa so you better be nice <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you need to know about cybernetic Franklin D. Roosevelt. Yeah, apparently. Um, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's... Yeah, that's That's great. like two lives. Except for it wasn't. Do you want me to give one? No, you did. You added the spider oh, thing. Okay. Which was a fact. Yeah, that was real. Both of those were definitely real. He's still alive. He's um, out there. Okay. So anyway, let's kick it over to your holiday corner. Yeah. Um, today's the twentieth, like he said. Mm-hmm. Which is, it is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is so actually. But that's 
It's a good holiday. That, it is a good holiday, but it's not funny. So we're not going to talk about but it. But you know what other day it is? As much as I respect Martin Luther King Jr., I would love to hear what the other day is. So. Uh, it's National Cheese Lovers Day. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr., obvious cheese lover. He <laughs> loved cheese so very much that they said, you know what? You know what? Third Monday every uh, January, Martin Luther King and his number one love, cheese. Well, um, this is every January 20th. No, we'll we'll change that. We'll change okay, that. We'll change. We'll, it. We'll, change it. we'll 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 lobby. We'll lobby in Congress. Um, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. National Cheese Lovers Day. Do you love cheese? I do love cheese. Okay, well, this is the day for you, Sam. I am not lactose intolerant. What's your favorite? What's your favorite cheese? Um, you like Gouda? I like um mozzarella Kraft singles. And Parmesan. <laughs> I don't think Kraft oh, singles no. is literally ricotta cheese. is amazing. I love ricotta cheese. I've started to like blue cheese on my salads. Interesting. Like the blue cheese crumbles, so, you know. I just love lasagna, so I like all the cheese that's in there. All the lasagna cheeses. I'm, my number one cheese is probably pepper jack cheese. Cool. I think I am starting to get lactose intolerant, or maybe it's something that's like I've had. I don't had. think you develop it. Are you sure? Because I don't remember. I think it's genetic. Because now every, time, now every time I eat a bowl of cereal... My stomach gives me, like, I have horrible gas. I didn't want to say it. I fart a lot, and it's bad. <laughs> you had to get there. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think but, it's picked up. But I'll tell you, but I'll tell you, when I was young, that didn't happen. Okay. I can still down a whole bowl of cereal and be fine. Mainly because I eat cereal every day of my life. Well, you would feel like the more you're exposed to it, the more likely you would be intolerant to it like you have like a cheat like a Why? milk overdose oh it's <laughs> i would eat on milk <laughs> yeah like you can drink too much water like that's a thing that's not entirely like... different than what you're describing no you, no like, it's not know. you know it is <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway how to observe cheese lovers day um eat by cheese. eating cheese it says that eat on some here. cheese Put it on crackers or a sandwich. Make yourself a pizza with an extra heaping helping of it. Or eat some nachos. <clears throat> make a cheese sandwich, but instead of bread, use cheese. Make your own cheese or try cheese out of your comfort zone. Make your own cheese. Now, I feel like that's a Buy very... Buy hard, soft, blue cheese, as well as things to pair with such as grapes, olives, or tomatoes. Don't forget to buy some wine, too. If you are feeling creative, you could design a cheese board. Let your cheese sit out for a half an hour at room temperature to give it a better texture and flavor. Is that what then that actually enjoy says? Or... It with your friends, perhaps at a cheese party at your home. To burn off some of those cheese calories, you, you could get yourself moving and visit a cheese factory or plan a trip to a cheese festival. Sam, do you want to have a cheese party? <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing that like people did. I would love to have a cheese party. But it's only like... Me and you. Basically, <laughs> we'll just make lasagna. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just make some, lasagna. Make some lasagna. But um, like cheese-heavy lasagna. I just read word for word the how to observe section for this holiday. And, it was and you got really into it. And I it was really you... like... It, it was really rousing, and I'm really excited for Cheese Day. <laughs> I'm very excited for Cheese Day. National Cheese Lovers Day. Let's just shorten it. When we make it the third Monday of every uh, January, we'll just shorten it to Cheese Day. It's Cheese Day. It's Cheese Day, well, right behind Martin Luther King Jr. Day. That's our holiday. Yeah. Read up about Martin Luther King, celebrate his life, his accomplishments, and also well, eat some, some cheese. cheese. We're going to and a cheese factory. Maybe a cheesecake or factory. Or designing a cheese mm. board. <laughs> stop, stop doing the cheese stuff. Okay. You're scaring me now. I love cheese. <laughs> I'm the cheese. <laughs> so man. much. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you for listening to From Our Perspective, uh, episode 51. Uh, you know, you can find us pretty much everywhere. Uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You're already listening to it, so you know like where you listen to it. So, but if there's somewhere else you would like to listen to it, let us know and we'll try to get on there if we're not already on there. Um, but you can find us pretty much anywhere you find podcasts from our perspective. 
Uh, if you can, on wherever you listen to it, leave us a, a rating or a review. Let us know how we're doing, good, better, otherwise. We'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have a topic to suggest that you'd like us to talk about, let us know. We'll talk about it within reason. Uh, also, suggest this show to your friends if you think they'll like it, even if you don't think they'll like Please. it. Hold them down, strap them down, put headphones on them, and force them to listen to yes. it until they start to like it, until they develop the first ever known case of podcast Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> Make them listen to us, and we will... We won't do anything. We'll say thank you um, to you thank if you, you do that. Um, but other than that, if you want to find us on social media, you can. Media, you can. Um, FOP underscore pod on Instagram and Twitter. Find us on Facebook at From Our Perspective. We're also on YouTube if you want to, uh, you know, go listen to the videos there or the podcast there. They are videos, but there's nothing special to them. Uh, and we post like memes and funny things that we think and updates and little trailers for the uh, podcast on our social media platforms. But other than that, we post the podcast every Monday and we will see you next Monday. I've been Trace. And I've been Sam. Goodbye. Toodaloo.